the nonprofit podcast powered by DonorBox. The last few years have been something else. The pandemic, the Great Recession, changes in charitable giving. There's just so much. So many organizations have been working day in and day out to meet these challenges. I think most of our organizations look a little different now than they did just a few years ago. Does yours? Now is a terrific time to take a good look at your fundraising processes and your development program and decide what's working, what isn't, and where you can or should shift your focus and resources to continue to meet your mission. It might be time for a development audit. Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Kara, fundraising coach at DonorBox. We're here each week with practical actions you can use today to increase donations and take your nonprofit to the next level tomorrow. When you use the word audit, you may think of an accountant looking through your financial paperwork and records, and that is not what I'm talking about today. What we are talking about today is not a close look at your finances, but instead a development audit looks at your data, your systems, structures, and staffing to provide a clear view of your organization's fundraising potential. A development audit does not mean you're in trouble, not at all. It's simply an objective assessment of your fundraising programs and the systems that you have in place to support them. A good audit takes a close, holistic look at your whole fundraising operation. It might look at your organizational structure, your board's role, staff roles, cultivation and stewardship that you have for potential donors. It might look at your donor communications and your fundraising systems, which would be your fundraising history and the procedures you have. It's a real treat to have our guest with us on the nonprofit podcast today. We recently hosted a special workshop for our DonorBox Premium clients. We welcome Lee Ernst from Johnson Gross Nickel and Associates of Indianapolis, or JGA as we refer to them. As a senior consultant at JGA, Lee shares deep experience working with donors at large universities and social service organizations. Lee has a rich professional history in fundraising for major gifts and program development and capital campaigns in Chicago and Indianapolis. She's an active volunteer and consultant with local and national nonprofit organizations, and I value her insight and hope you will too. Well, Lee, thank you so much for joining the podcast. Absolutely. It's good to be here. We've had a recent workshop on development audits that you helped us with, and I thought that it would be really great to take the conversation to the podcast. So first, I want to start with this question that I get a lot when I mention a development audit. What is the difference between a financial audit that most organizations are familiar with and a development audit, which is different, right? Great question. And in short, I would say, yes, it sure is. So our firm, Johnson Gross Nickel and Associates, or JGA, focuses on philanthropy and specifically when we think of philanthropy, development audits, not financial audits. But most simply, the way I like to say it is a development audit helps an organization internally review its development systems, structures, processes, and data all through the lens of development to help them achieve future fundraising goals. Great. And as an organization, why would we want to undertake a development audit? What would be that one thing that says, okay, it's time? We often see three or four indicators rise to the top when an organization puts their hands up and and, and says, it's time. One would be institutional planning. A new strategic plan, a new development plan is put together. How does that audit help align where we're going in the future? A second indicator would be staff changes. A new CEO, a new executive director, changes on the board. And then the last that I would say often or most often occur would be when there are shifts in revenue stream. We all have seen that, right, with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what are some common aha moments that you've seen when you've worked with organizations? It's it's a great question. So many times we'll see two things fall under the aha category. One is the ROI. So an audit will review an organization's uh, return on investment as well as the cost to raise a dollar. But when you compare that return on investment 
sometimes we'll have clients say, look how good my ROI is. You know, it's, it's a thousand plus. And what we say is, are you investing enough? Sometimes your donors will say, are you too lean? Mm-hmm. And are you truly effective, able to fulfill your mission to the full extent when, when you are so lean that you have one or two staff members based on your budget? So that's one, the ROI. Sometimes it's the opposite. How do we increase it? But the other aha moment that we'll often see is, a mismatch of current donors or prospects and staff not having enough staff or staff focused on the right areas to match what they've stated as their future fundraising goals and prospects. Mm -hmm. How far back do you go when you're looking at data? So if you're looking at the number of individual givers or the number of grants you're receiving, how far back would you recommend going? We like to use an average of five years, Mm -hmm. but we know sometimes that can be tricky for an organization or if it's hard to pull that data. In that case, we'll focus on three, but I would say three to five would be the most standard year that we'll use. And how do you work with staff and boards? How do they work together to pull this information and share this information for an audit? So we like to think of it in two ways. At the front end, when an audit begins, putting everyone around the room and saying, okay, what are all of our roles here? Who's going to pull the data? When will we need to receive the data? It's that organization aspect of it and going through the methodology. So everyone has good clarity there. And then most importantly, on the back end, reviewing the audit with both leadership first, but then also with staff, with development staff and saying, how does this audit impact you? And what are the implications for you and your job as you think about aligning the audit with the future uh, organization's goals. So making sure everyone has good clarity and consensus on how to move forward using the audit well. Okay, here's a big question. It's sometimes really hard for an organization or a staff member to add just one more thing to an ever-growing list of everything that needs to be done within an organization What is your suggestion for being intentional about conducting a development audit for making it happen? That's a great question. Um, And we're big believers in in, in saying that an audit is a time to be reflective and to use data to make thoughtful decisions, but we have to be on board with it, right? So it means putting the work in at the front end, the organization and saying, we're going to take the time to go through an audit here's why we're going to do it. And here are our expected outcomes. But making sure staff, board, everyone involved has that good clarity. And let's be honest, we know that takes time. But if you take the time at the front end, you'll have the, the better results on the back end. Excellent. If someone wanted to learn more about how to work with you or Johnson Gross Nickel and Associates, where can they find more information? Absolutely. So they um, can find us on the website. Our website is JGA Council. C-O-U-N-S-E-L dot com. So our website, they can always call us. Um, the number is on the website. They can also find us on LinkedIn as well. So always looking forward to having those conversations and serving as thought partners with individuals there. Thanks, Lee. And I know you have a great tip sheet on development audits, and we'll be sure to link that in the show notes. So thanks so much for joining us for just a few minutes today. Sure, It's been great. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Ultimately, the results of the audit will help you and your board and your staff create an action plan. You'll have an idea of where your weak points are in your organization. For instance, I worked with an organization a few years ago, and when they took a look at their givers, they found that there were just a few major donors making up a large percentage of overall dollars given to the organization. Maybe five donors were making up a huge percentage. Two of them left the organization, and you can imagine what happened. Staff restructure, program cuts, etc. But by taking a broad-based view of your overall organization, you might be able to spot problems like that before they happen. Then, with your results and your action plan, you can then put a development or fundraising plan in place to prepare for future growth and maybe find some untapped fundraising potential there, too. Lee shared a tip sheet with us, and you can find that in the show notes. If you'd like to learn more about how to get connected with our DonorBox Premium Special Monthly Workshops, please email me at academy at donorbox.org, and we'll leave that for you in the show notes as well. Thank you for choosing to spend time with the Nonprofit Podcast. I hope you've left with the confidence to take a small step today that will make a big difference tomorrow. Be sure to click the download button on your podcast player, then leave the Nonprofit Podcast a review or give it a thumbs up if you're listening to the Nonprofit Podcast on YouTube. 
Your review really is a great way to help others find us. You're here to help others and we're here to help you. So until next time, stay inspired. That warm feeling when you help someone, it's not just happiness, it's fulfillment. And we believe it should be available to everyone. From frontline heroes to first time fundraisers, our tools empower you to help others. This is our mission. This is DonorBox, helping you help others.